Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Among Cultists by Godot Games. This is a four to eight player game that takes roughly 45 to 90 minutes to play. It's for ages 14 and up, and the game is based loosely around the cult following of Among Us, the computer game slash app game that you can play pretty much anywhere. And this is kind of like the board game love letter to that. In Among Cultists, you are playing as uh, investigators in the Miskatonic University, and one of you is a cultist, which means there is one cultist among you, and your objective is to go throughout the different locations in the university and present uh, challenges to yourself by successfully gathering these books and bringing them back, and as you gather collections, you'll score points. And in the game, based on the number of books you need for each of the different locations, you're going to get points. If you uh, get uh, 10 points for a four to five player game, you win, and so on and so forth. The more players in the game, the more A, investigators and slash cultists, and B, the more points you will need to win. Uh, each player is going to start off with a character board, an alignment, a certain number of cards that you'll be using to give to other players, and you're also going to be getting a route card, which will allow you to utilize locations based on what your route says. Additionally, every player is going to start off as either dead or alive. In a smaller player game, most times it's just going to be one player that is dead. The cultist will know who is dead, but no one else will. The cultist is going to attempt to go around, sabotage buildings to make sure it's impossible for the investigators to successfully score their missions, B, attempt to eliminate investigators secretly as you visit different rooms with the uh, <laughs> other players, you are going to receive a card. It's going to be one of these uh, health cards. Cards. And uh, most of the time you're going to be getting these green cards, but on the occasion if you visit a cultist and they choose to do so, they can kill you. And the cultist will win if everyone is dead as well. And that's basically the idea of the game. Score enough points as the investigators or find the cultist among you, or you can be the cultist and eliminate every player and by the end of the round announce it, or B, by the end of the game make sure that nobody has enough points in order to score, in order to win. That's how you play it. Let's talk about the brief setup and uh, how to play kind of rules and then we'll go into my review. Alright, so for setup, just the quick explanation. I'm not going to go into all of it. It's really easily described in the rules, but basically you're going to set up the board based on the number of players and it'll tell you in the rulebook what you need to do in order for that to happen. You're then going to also give every single room a card and the card is going to be based based on a random deck of cards that is going to be generated by the rules as well. And if you um, are lucky enough, you're going to have a card that has a check mark, otherwise it's going to be an X, and even worse, it could be a sabotage, which is like an X minus one. And each room is going to have one of these cards. It'll also have a check box that's going to start off in the X position, and that will be turned into the check position when enough cards fill the room deck. It's also going to have each room enough books in order to supply it with being able to transfer them over to score the student's points. Uh, there are certain specific little tokens, like the lighting token, which will go in the lighting room, uh, that will make things light or dark, depending on if it is turned on or off. Uh, there's also going to be an evil fish man that will start off in the lake, and a bunch of cultists that will start off offside the board. And then you're going to have certain decks of cards. You're going to have uh, a draw deck, you're going to have a, um, I guess like a, a passage deck, so to speak, which will start with two cards, and then there's also going to be a portal that you put next to the passage deck. And you will have a turn marker. Uh, this is going to indicate the number of rounds in the game, which is going to be 10, as well as a moving little um, dial here that starts from one and goes across. And as it goes across, you'll add new events that are placed in a bag that come out at the, in the middle of every single round. And if the game ends, that's because this little marker went to 10. Everybody's going to start in the middle and then uh, that's pretty much it. You have a certain number of cards. You're going to have a token de declaring your alignment. There are multiple alignments in the game, which is all described inside the rules. But for the most part, there's going to be the seer, there's going to be the investigators, and there's going to be the cultist or cultists, depending on the number of players. So uh, that's, that's basically set up. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. As for playing the game, another very straightforward, I'm just going to go through the basics. You're going to move up to three spaces with your investigator, treating hallways as one space and rooms as one space. Uh, when you move, you can only follow or you should only follow your pathing because each round is going to tell you which of the different room colors you can go to and actually do your room action. Otherwise, you can go to a different location, but it's not going to help you. 
Um, and so there's kind of like a guide as to where you probably should be going in order to solve or complete the different cases and whatnot. So if main, mine says like blue and mine says green, I'd be going back and forth between blue and green, but I could choose, choose on certain rounds to go to red or go to orange or purple and try and help other players there. But anyway, you move. Once you move, you'll enter a location. If you enter a location with another player, you're going to need to trade uh, one of your plus cards with them. You're gonna start with one which indicates whether you're alive or dead, and that pile will grow. However, your interaction cards, cards that as you meet people and you give them out, it will deplete over time. So if I walk into a room with somebody, so somebody's here and I walk into a room with them, I would trade them one of these guys and they would put it down in their little like health area and they would do that the same for me. If you're an investigator, it's just always going to be plus, no big deal. You're just going to give them a healthy card. But if you are the cultist, you will have a variety of cards. You're going to have the negatives, the death cards, and the plus cards with the health cards. And you could choose to kill players throughout the game, and that's what you're going to be trying to do. Um, oh, I guess I should, forgot to mention too, beginning of the game, there's a setup phase where you have this kind of night cycle where everybody closes their eyes, but the cultist reveals himself, only to himself and other cultists, and sees which players have been murdered randomly from the game's rules. Forgetting about that though, basically as you move around, you're going to go into rooms and you're going to basically be trading interaction cards with players when you run into them. Then you're going to draw a card from the bag and you're going to initiate an event. The event is going to be random and there are a multitude of events in the game. You'll place it on the round that it is currently at and do whatever it says. Maybe portals have opened up, maybe monsters have spawned, maybe cultists have spawned. Uh, perhaps there's going to be things that are going to stop you from talking throughout the round, etc., etc. Then the last thing, you'll either take a player action or a room action. Player actions can be stuff like defeating minions in a room, like a cultist, which are not the cultists that you start playing with as another player, but these little token cultists that can spawn out. Or maybe you're gonna use a room ability like lights on slash use cameras. You can look at a room that was previously visited by two people and check one of their decks to see what the interaction was like. Um, and you could also initiate votes. That's an important thing for investigators. If you initiate a vote, then you can determine if one player is the cultist by calling them out and voting on them. And if the majority votes them out, then they're going to be out of the game. And thusly, that could be a way for the investigators to win. It could also be a way for them to lose though, because if they vote somebody out who's not a cultist, then that person is just out of the game, and now you're one shy away from being able to complete the objective of the game, which is gathering enough books to get points. Then there's also the ability to gather books, but in order to do that, you're gonna to need to take cards from your hand, and you're gonna be placing them down on the room areas. So each room is gonna start with one of these cards here, and when it gets to three, after two other player actions have given it two cards, the X marker will indicate a plus sign instead, and as a new action, you can shuffle this deck, reveal a card, and if it's a check mark, you're then going to be able to place a book from this room onto the scoring points board. And when that fills up, you score the number of points indicated, and thusly, that's how you can win. There's a few other actions that you're going to have based on whether or not you have the first player marker, etc., etc. But you can look at that in the rules or on my playthrough. And that's basically how the game goes. This is then going to pass, the first player marker, and this status token will pass as well. It indicates basically whether you're taking your actions or whether you're moving to the person on your left. And a new round will begin, and once all of the rounds trigger, all 10 rounds, you'll check to see if there's enough points. And if there's enough points, then the investigators win, if not the cultists win. However, if the cultists notice that all of the players are dead, then in that case, the cultist is going to win, or if the cultist is uh, able to sabotage, they will win. But if the cultist is eliminated, then the investigators can win that way as well. It's basically Among Us set in kind of a uh, Cthulian mythos with Miskatonic University. A really cool little game. Let's talk about my review. So Among Cultists has a lot of stuff going on. Basically, you're going to be starting with one of these envelopes. There's cards in it. Those are basically your starting three decks. It's going to tell you, A, where you can move, and basically what your route is, which you'll be moving around. Um, I'm trying to follow this route as best as possible. The cultists can just ignore it, though. Uh, you're going to have the pluses, which are going to be your health cards. So if you're the investigator, it's 
just there to uh, kind of ensue dissent, whereas for the cultists, it's a way to kill other players. And then the other one are these check cards. The cultist has nasty ones that can sabotage other players, as well as just make them fail. And the good investigator is just going to be putting them into locations to help continually increase that location's uh, likelihood of succeeding certain missions. And so you'll shuffle those little envelopes up based on what decks. It'll also include what role you are, whether you're investigator, seer, or a min one of the many other classes, and you'll deal them out. There's a werewolf slash mafia phase at the beginning of the game that tells the players that need to know information, information, and then the basic turns of the round go forth. And they're all pretty simple. Just moving, checking to see what event is coming out, and then being able to participate in an action in the room you're in, or of course a player action. And you move along through there. It's, it's, it's really, really straightforward, really simple as to how the gameplay works. In a four and a seven player game, there's also going to be an AI that is played. In one of our playthroughs uh, online, we didn't know how to play the AI character. And so because of that, we went ahead and just kind of made rules that were probably similar to how it really is played, just because we didn't have that, the rules at the time. Um, which you will have by the Kickstarter cam campaign, or at least shortly thereafter. Uh, and we it played really well. We enjoyed ourselves and our time um, playing with the AI character that we kind of made. So if you do watch that video, just realize that that's just not necessarily what it's going to feel like when, when playing with an AI. But So I want to just mainly talk about the gameplay uh, itself. This game here is going to be best with more players. The more players, the better, because that ensues a different amount of feeling as to what, where you should go, who's visiting who, how many times are people visiting other players, what books need to be gathered from what rooms, which rooms are likely trapped by the fact that there are multiple players going to them, and which rooms are most likely safe. Players that simply tend to go by themselves to different locations might likely be the ones that are good, but uh, they might also be just dropping off little negative cards in each of the decks. Uh, additionally, if you go off on your own to different locations, yeah, it might help you make sure that you're not going to die and make sure that the decks you're putting cards in are going to be successful, but you're slow, and the likelihood of you finishing the game in time is not as guaranteed as if you are to trust one or two people, as opposed to just trying to do it all on your own. There are cool little events, like a lights out, which can mess with the players in different ways. There is Fishman that's going to come out, and he'll block certain paths that make it more difficult for players to traverse the map. There's going to be a bunch of little cultist mini-dudes that kind of pop out onto different locations, and then prevent the players with a lack of opportunity when it comes to getting to take an action in that space. Um, but the game plays very, very simply, and even without understanding the game Among Us or any of those app games, you will understand how this game flows and how it plays pretty simply by the fact that this is a deduction slash trader game that's fit in a nice and neat world with a nice little twist. I personally love this game specifically because how it felt as I played. I was nervous what was going on. I didn't know who to trust or when to trust them. And as things unfold, you start seeing, okay, this guy's more trustworthy, or maybe he's not. He's visiting too many people. He's not visiting anyone. This deck is really nasty. Why is this so nasty? There's only two people that joined it. Maybe one of them is the bad guy. Uh, oh, but maybe this the deck came with a really bad card in it, and we've been drawing that card over and over when we randomly shuffle the deck and place a book down. So there's a lot of ways to kind of hide yourself as the cultist and a lot of ways to make people kind of wishy-washy as to whether or not you're really good. And that always makes for a great deduction game. The artwork is solid. The fact that you can play the game after you die is great as well. And the fact that you don't know if you're dead at the beginning of the game or at any point in the game until someone reveals you as dead. And only the cultist is going to hide you from being dead However, players who are <laughs> not cultists will reveal you and say, oh, you, you've died. And di dead players can basically do almost everything that alive players can do, but there are certain things they do not do. I believe they cannot trade cards with other players because they cannot kill anybody and they can't use certain room actions, but they're still able to gather books and bring them back to the library. You can still play the game, which is great. It's just one less objective for the killer to make. Uh, the fact that there's multiple different roles in the game that change how you play and what you can do in the game is great. Uh, that there's also going to be randomized decks that are going to be drawn based on when cultists pop out and uh, based on whether or not you're going to have an event take place. Kind of like in some of the games where there's a timed event and if you can't solve it in time, bad things are going to happen. Even the chits, the pucks are really heavy and thick. I like that. I like it makes it easy to see where the players are, whether they're alive or whether they're dead. 
uh, yeah, it, it just, it was a lot of fun. Everybody at the table really enjoyed this game and was quite willing to play again later after the cameras were off. And that just goes to show how much of a fun game it is. Uh, even with the basic four players and how we played, it was an enjoyable experience and I would definitely play it again. I'm excited to see the full rules to the game and see it's how it's all put together. But yes, overall, Among Cultists is excellent. I'm a big fan of Among Us and I think they brought the game to the board. Uh, a, they did a, a very good job of, of that. They like there was a love letter to that game um, in, in a lot of ways. And in some, in some ways, this is a game that plays better uh, than other games that try and bring IPs to the table because you could just feel each of the interactions on the board, all the mechanics flowed and felt like portions of that game, which is really cool. If you like the uh, Hmong cultist sort of feel, Miskatonic University feel, if you like a trader game, if you like being able to be cooperative with other players and you stay in the game even after you die, then this is gonna be a fun game for you. As far as negatives, go. I, I, I don't specifically have any because I personally love these type of games, but I guess if you do not like an aggressive game that involves having to lie or mistrust people, uh, then this one's kind of off your radar maybe, but even still you can choose to never lie in this game as a bad guy and just choose to go about sabotaging things and hurting the players in a way that doesn't involve killing them if you want, and that's still an option to win. Uh, last thing to say about this game is most of the time you're going to want to find the cultist and call them out with a vote. That's how you're going to win as the good guys, in my opinion. Or if you're the cultist, you're going to simply try and kill all the players. It's quicker, it's easier, and as long as you can hide for long enough to where they don't vote you out, just enough plausible deniability, you will win the game. So this game here, Seal of Approval, this is an excellent, excellent game. I strongly recommend it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Among Cultists by Godot Games. If you like this video, check out our star videos here on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe bell button on the channel. You can also check out our live streams every six, every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We're also on Whatnot. We sell a lot of board games on there every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Our Whatnot link will be down below. You can purchase games on the cheap. Uh, you can also go ahead and join our Discord and, of course, check out our website. There's a ton of stuff, content on there that you can participate in and on our whatnot and on our live streams we give away games for free so that's another reason to join us and see what we've got going on here all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to venturing into miskatonic university with you next time